good morning students this is our very first online chapter of english grammar and it will be in two parts the topic is modal verbs structure and uses so let's start so first of all we look what are models as we have done earlier also like you must have studied these words in between sentences will would shall should may might must ought to need used to can could dare and these all are called modal auxiliary verb they also work as verbs like you can say helping verbs but they are different kind of helping verbs and they are always followed by principal verb in always first form it doesn't take any s or es any ed any second form any third form so why they are special together with the principal verb they express the mode of the action or mood of the action denoted by the verb because these helping verb these models helps verb in expressing certain special moods like they expresses such ideas as ability probability command duty permission etc modal auxiliary verbs provide additional information about the verb that follows each modal verb can have more than one meaning which depends on the context of the sentence or question you can go now in this what meaning we have we have the sense of permission and i can play the guitar it shows ability the sentence structure what will be the sentence structure while using modal verbs so structure with the modal verb a modal verb is followed by another verb we always have two verbs like one is modal verb and another one is main verb and that two in always first form means basic form we do we won't use any s or es or any ed or any any en means we won't use first form with s or es second form or third form now see the structure what will be the structure subject plus modal verb then verbs first form then object look at the example here i can speak english i can and speak is the very verb first form speak english not like that i can to speak english that will be wrong he can speak spanish he can speaks if we are going to add s here that will be wrong she can speak spanish not she cans that also be very wrong now we will look upon the next structure that is negative structure and the stu structure is here subject model not verb first form then object okay so look at the example here we must not walk on the grass must is model we'll always use not just after the model and we'll use not between the model and main verb he cannot speak arabic he cannot speak arabic we can also uh, write it like can't shouldn't or wouldn't we, we we can also speak it like that we should not be late we shouldn't be late as you can see in the examples above contraction of the modal verb plus not are normally possible the negative of can is can't and the contraction is can't okay so now the structure in interrogative question modal verb in questions so what will be the structure then then here will be model subject plus verb first form plus object and at last what should be there there should be interrogative mark so may i help you may is model i is subject then verb then object and then mark of interrogation can i have another piece of cake please would you like to come with us so we have seen or noticed we have learned that in interrogative form we always use these models at very first in the starting now we'll we'll start 
learning particular models and their uses. So we are going to start with the uses of will. So as we know that shall and will, they are the helping verb of future tense. And we also know that shall is always used with the first person, means with I or we. And will is always used with the second person and third, per third person. So this is our very first point. Will is used with the second and third person, you, he, she, it, they, name. To express future action means whenever we are going to just simply uh, express the future action, we will use will with these subjects. But now in special condition, as we have studied in introduction that these models express different mood or actions. Now we'll learn how they will express different mood. So look at the second point. Will is used with the first person. Now, to, uh, as we know, people are saying these days, we can use will uh, with first person, with I or sh shell, because we have these condition applied on those certain sentences, like willingness to or offer, willingness or offer, like I will help you as far as possible, means it is an offer that I'm offering that as far as it will be possible, I'll be helping you. And when we are going to express promise or intention, so be careful with all these condition will will be used only with I or we. We will come in time. That is promise. Or you can say it is intention also to express threat. What is threat? I will beat you in black and blue. I, I means I'm going to beat you very bitterly to express determination. I won't let you down it's like it is a determination i won't let you down i'll be successful in whatever task i'll be given but here you have to see or note down in interrogative sentence will is used with the second and third person means in interrogative sentence we won't use will with i or we look at the example will you open the window please note here where discipline is a must means wherever we are going to talk about discipline we are going to use will there just like you must have heard many times students will submit their homework on time officers will appear properly dressed in public places so these are the condition where we are going to use will now we will learn the uses of shell as we have studied, studied will is the past form, uh, will is the helping verb of future tense, like shell is also the helping verb of future tense, and it is always used with I or V, and in which uh, condition? To express the future action. Just like you can see the example here, we shall leave for Delhi tomorrow. It's just a simple future action. But what are the special condition we are going to use shell? with these subjects like you, he, she, it, name and they to express command. Whenever we are going to express a command, we are going to use shall with all those subjects. You shall do it. It's a command to express threat. You shall be punished for she shall be punished for her mistakes. It's it's a threat or whenever we are going to uh, show a promise you shall get leave today it's a promise but again in interrogative sentence shall is used with the first person to express an offer or suggestion as shall i shut this window you can say it is an offer shall i post this letter for you it's an offer with the third person shall shows command or wish of the person dressed addressed as shall he carry your luggage so these were the uses of shell and now next model is should should is the past tense of shell it is used here are the condition where we will, we will use should to denote in indirect speech the past tense of shell i said that i should go so you can easily recognize indirect speech whenever we will have said that and another clause. 
Second point is to express moral duty or advice. We always use should with moral duties and to express advice. We should respect our elders. We should obey our teachers. We should help poor. Next is to express purpose. We, we worked hard so that we should pass the examination. What is the working too hard is to pass the examination. Next is to express probability. Should they play well, they will win. It's a probability. Now the last one is to show assumption. He should have come by now. It's a assumption. Next is would. Would is the past tense of will. It is used. Here are the condition where we are going to use would to denote the past tense of will or shall in indirect speech. She said that she would go to Jaipur. She said that he would look into the matter. As we can see that said is there. Said is the past form. And whenever we have said, we always change inside verb of reported speech into past. So we have changed will into would. To express a habitual activity in the past, he would go for swim in the sea. Next is to make a polite request. These are the most used condition of would. To pol polite request, would you like to take a cup of tea? Next is to express a wish. Would that I were a king. It's totally a wish, completely a wish. To express preference. I would like to ask you something and we can also recognize where is we are talking about preferences when we will have like word in the sentence to express an unreal condition condition. So these these are conditional sentences. So here we will have one if clause and another one is main clause. So in main clause we will use would if the if condition is in past. I were the principal of my, if I were the principal of my school, I would give two periods of games daily. So students, these were the four models uh, along with the introduction. We'll continue in part two rest of the, with the rest of models.